Okay, so you're stuck on the side of a hill and you've got to recover your four-wheel drive and you're not sure whether your gear's up to the task. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the loads and work out whether your equipment's up to the task. <laughs> okay, one of the things before we could crack into the video, uh, there's multiple ways to actually make these calculations and different organisations do things different ways. Now these calculations are referenced from the nationally recognised Australian four-wheel drive courses. So there's three modules for that. There's drive and unsealed roads, recover four-wheel drive and complex four-wheel drive operations. Uh, they're the three nationally recognised four-wheel drive courses and that's where these calculations come from. So if you've got uh, another way of doing it uh, just chuck it down in the comments down below i'd like to hear what it is but please don't go and uh jump on you know come out swinging and saying i'm wrong because uh they aren't wrong they are correct um but there's more than way, one way to skin a cat okay so the first thing we need to do is to determine the gvm now the factory gvm on the wrangler is 2640 kilos now we can round this up to 3,000 kilos in order to give us a safety factor and to simplify the equation. So what we need to do is determine what 1% of the GVM is. In order to do that, what we do is we take our GVM, divide that by 100, that will give us 30 kilograms, and we need to remember that number. Okay, the next thing we need to do is determine the rolling resistance of the terrain. Now, these numbers are pulled from the nationally recognised Australian four -wheel drive course, bitumen 4%, drive firm grass, soil 13%, wet sand 20%, deep soft sand 30%, shallow mud 25%, clay mud 57%, bogged up to the axles 100%, bogged up to the wheel height 200%, rocks 50%. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is determine the slope in degrees. Now we need to make sure we're talking about the slope in degrees of the actual obstacle that's holding us up, not necessarily the overall gradient of the hill. For example, maybe just be a 20 degree gradient on the hill, but there might be one section or rock step that's holding you up, which could be 30 or 40 degrees. What we can do is use an inclinometer on our phone, or once we get a bit more experience, we can give it an educated estimate. Okay, so there's three main parts of this equation. Number one is determine the rolling resistance of the four-wheel drive. Part two is determine the force required to overcome the gradient slope. Part three, rolling resistance plus the force required to overcome the gradient will be the force required to recover the four-wheel drive. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a scenario from a recent VA record where we had to do a very, very heavy winch. Then we're going to go and calculate the actual loads that were involved in that winch. And limited options for winching. So with these extreme angles, it's really important to remember they can affect your oil pressure in the engine. It's really important to keep an eye on the gauges.
Okay, so let's work out how much actual force was required to pull the jeep over that hill. So, shallow mud was going to give us 25% resistance with that GVM, so that's 750 kilograms of force there, plus our 35 degrees of gradient times the GVM divided by 60 equals 1250 kilos, 750 kilos plus 1250 equals 2000 kilos of force required to recover the four drive. Okay, so all we need to do now is compare those loads to the load ratings on all your recovery equipment. Now if you need to properly understand load ratings in four-wheel drive recovery, I'll leave a link just up in the top right hand corner. But if you do find that the load is in excess of the load ratings of your equipment, you're going to have to start looking at using different methods to reduce the load. Now if you'd like to see a video on that, comment in down in the comment section down below and we'll conduct a video on more complex recoveries and how to conduct them. Okay, so if you found it helpful or you liked the video, do me a favor, click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one.